Good morning, everyone. Start, right? yes. So, yeah, um, just to introduce myself, I'm Sunit. Uh, I work as a designer at Creative, and uh, today, basically, I'm doing this workshop, which essentially is going to help you. Uh, it, 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 the whole idea of the workshop is to kind of walk you through certain exercises and concepts that, like, you know, you get familiar with, and then you can kind of actually easily apply them in your projects. Uh, so uh, just to kind of give you a sense of um, like what we're going to do today, right? So there's basically like uh, we're going to do about three exercises, right? Uh, the first one is basic. I mean, it's pretty fundamental. It's just basically kind of, uh, you know, will really kind of get you warmed up in terms of how to approach a design problem. Uh, the other exercise is basically which I think a lot of people uh, kind of, uh, you know, find it hard to kind of uh, balance out is how do you balance basically business with design, right? So the second exercise is really about that. Um, and then basically the other main problem is like if, if you guys get a project uh, and you got to start it from scratch, like what is the design process to follow, right? What is the framework that will kind of help you make decisions as you go along? Uh, and I mean, through this, I'm going to like, uh, I'm picking like examples from Creator because that's something that, you know, uh, obviously I understand and, you know, I've worked on personally. So uh, I think that will kind of give you a sort of um, perspective and uh, some inspiration to, you know, start working on the assignments that have been given to you, right? So I think the, the main focus uh, today is, I mean, obviously design is a very vast sort of, uh, topic in itself um, and you can actually go down you, you could have a workshop at a very very uh, sort of uh, you know specialized level but we are just going to cover three main uh, three main areas basically just I think the the key is really how do you I mean first before you approach a design problem like it's very important to understand the context right how is basically someone going to use the product in what context is he going to use it is he on the move, busy, you know, in his house, etc., etc. Right? Uh, just understanding the timeline of how the user is actually going to use the product. The other thing, the, the other thing is really like once you understand, uh, you know, the sequence of events that's happening with the user and how he's interacting with the system. Like how is the information structured? And the last is basically the presentational, the presentational layer. Uh, you know, even though. This is like, you know, I would say cosmetic, it kind of, uh, you know, plays a huge role in the overall experience. So we're going to actually talk about these three things. So, um, I mean, when you talk about approaching a design problem, right, um, I think, um, uh, I think the main important thing is really to, you know, ask these questions, right? Who is, who really wants this information? What's most important? And what is the context in some, I mean, what is the context in, uh, what is the context in which the information is going to get consumed? So, just give you an example. Um, you know, this is what our ticket looked like. I mean, if you look, if you look at it, um, you know, it looks pretty clean. It kind of follows standards and stuff like that. You can see, uh, you can find information, you know, very clearly. But I mean, if you actually think about how the ticket is going to get consumed, right? You can make a lot of sort of enhancements. So, like, you know, you can break the itinerary so that it's, you know, you can get a sense of the itinerary in a slightly, I mean, at, at one glance, and then you kind of, you know, then talk about the tablet and stuff like that. So if you see the difference between both of these, like it's just like the, the, the information is, you know, structured in a much sort of cleaner way, right? And it's easier to find out, right? Um, so just some details, right? Uh, so giving you another example, uh, Anyone uses the passbook? Like, I mean, uh, how many uh, iOS users here? Right. So, I mean, uh, you have. Uh, so we basically designed. You know, when iOS six, or I, I, yeah, iOS six basically launched uh, passbook, and you know, we we wanted to kind of like you know have our sort of tickets delivered on the passbook. This is what it looked like, right? I mean, uh, passbooks obviously have um, you know it, it, the scope of design is very limited. Like most of the uh, iOS takes care of most of 
sort of the layout and stuff like that. It's just basically you figure out what data points you want to show and there's a ready template to be used, right? So if you look at it, it's, I mean, in its own self, it kind of works. But, uh, you know, if there's a, uh, if you have a traveler who's, you know, uh, booking lots of tickets with us, this is what it looks like, right? So in the passbook application, when you have like multiple tickets, this is what it is looking like, right? Uh, so we, I mean, you really can't see, you know, which pass is for what. It's just basically got, uh, you, it's just got basically the dates and stuff like that, right? So we kind of redesigned it. We said, okay, like, you know, right on top. Uh, we obviously did kind of, uh, we were never expecting this situation where people will have like 20 passes in their passbook, but that happened, right? Uh, in fact, that if that that image was tweeted by one of our customers, and he wasn't even complaining, but like we picked it up and we basically redesigned this. Uh, and this is what it looks like right now, right? So, like when it's in your passbook, so if you see compared to others, like you actually know the context of the pass itself, right? So, I mean, these are, I mean, you can actually make a difference through uh, design at a very very minute level, right? Uh, I mean, and just to kind of I mean, this was really to kind of give you, like, uh, before you start on, on your design exercise, right? I just wanted to highlight these things because the design exercise you're going to work on is kind of very similar. Uh, so, I'm just going to pass on some sheets, right? It's essentially, it's got, uh, we're going to look at the boarding pass. How many people have flown into Bangalore for the conference? Okay, a lot of people, okay. So, I mean... Like, you guys obviously have a first-hand experience, like, uh, more recently about using a pass, boarding pass. So, um, when I was talking about basically, like, you know, the context and, uh, you know, who's really going to use the sort of uh, this pass, right? It's just basically thinking about, you know, who's the user, right? Like, you know, if, if you look at the traveler, every, you, the, the pass actually goes through multiple hands right like you have you know the tableau obviously becomes the primary user right where he kind of needs to refer to the pass for like various information points right and then you know you have like the security guard who's uh you know during security check-in who actually looks at this uh, boarding pass and then you have the ground staff which is basically uh before you actually get onto the shuttle uh there's you know somebody who actually looks at your pass I mean, if there's a, you know, bar scanner, then it, it kind of gets scanned and, you know, you get registered as someone who's actually checking in uh, or, uh, sorry, boarding. Uh, and then you have somebody at the pre-boarding also to just make sure that you're getting onto the right flight, etc., etc. So everyone, like, kind of needs uh, a different sort of, is looking for a different data point at this stage, right? Um, so, obviously, I mean, if you look at, uh, if you look at the airline staff and the security staff, they seem to be doing this from, you know, they're just doing this from, I mean, from morning to evening, they're probably looking at 100, 200, maybe 1000 pa boarding passes a day. So obviously you don't have to design for them because they will kind of, uh, you know, they will get used to or they'll, they'll kind of figure out, uh, you know, where to look for in information, even, even if it's not prominent, right? So, um, Having said that, like I, I feel that you know, if you look at the weightage, I would say that like you know, seventy percent of the weightage on the boarding pass should be actually given to the information that's required by the uh, traveler, and you know, in, in fact, thirty or even less than that, you can actually give it to the rest of the people. So you guys have worksheets uh, on with you. So I would actually, uh, Kira. So I've actually just Does anyone need worksheets? So some part of it has got washed out. So I especially the traveler bit. So I'm just gonna keep this slide on. Right, uh, I've just grouped the information based on the primary user and secondary user, right? So, like, why don't you guys take a stab at, like, designing a much better boarding pass? 
uh, the second sheet essentially has information bucket. What is missing is uh, so I basically I created three buckets. There was basically the important stuff, not so important stuff, and the least important. I mean, when I talk about least important, you could basically chuck. Uh, you know, those. They, if you feel that there is something on the boarding path that's not required at all, you can just basically remove it. Anyone has any questions? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Exactly. So basically, I've you know I've noted down uh, you know what the primary user needs. Right? And you, if you see the block here, essentially is where you need to actually do the new uh, boarding pass. Yeah, I'll just try and uh, pull out the original thing here. So the sequence number is essentially the number in which. So when you check in, uh, check in, right? You 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 get assigned a number. So if you are the first one to check in, uh, you are basically sequence number one. Uh, so if you notice, like when you are actually boarding the flight, just I mean before you get into the shuttle, uh, you have you know the the uh, airline staff will actually if there is no barcode scanner, they would actually check off uh, 116. So they would have like a map. And they'll just check off that that this this person who checked in is actually is going to board, right? Just to keep track of who's not uh, checking, who's not checked in, or who's not boarded as it, who's not boarded as it. Sorry. So yeah, I mean, if you think about it, it's like it's it's a it's a uh, information that the traveler doesn't care about. Uh, already knows his name. Yeah, exactly. So it is, it is less important. But like I told you, there is a use case where you know there are multiple travelers, and you need yes. to, you, you need to kind of distribute the passes. Yes. At that point, it it's relevant. But yeah, I mean, it's not the most important thing. And the gender can safely be taken away. Yeah. What about the from because usually you are boarding a particular airport and you get the pass there and there, right? But yeah, you also get sometimes multiple boarding passes at the same time when you are hopping flights. So maybe in that case, that yeah, also right. also in an international case, yeah. Well, so you, you. from really that important, the destination is right. Even if you have multiple boarding passes, it's not like if you have Bangalore to say Dubai and Dubai to New York. Yeah. It's not like you have got to have a flight to board in Bangalore to New York directly. No, no, but yeah, you, I mean, I guess like when you have two boarding passes, you know that okay, I don't need this boarding pass right now, right? It's something that will I need later on. So yeah, I mean, it's a valid point, but again, like you know, you gotta you have to consider these cases as well. <laughs> yeah, I think the class also, I think you need for LTA if I'm not mistaken, uh, or something. You need it for something. I remember. Or produce the class number. Well, I, I know what you need it for. You need it for like, uh, uh, so for example, if you, um, you know, uh, if you book with Clear Trip and you know, you want to basically redeem miles. I mean, today we don't basically, I mean, today we, we started doing that, right? We send your fre uh, frequent flyer number, but earlier when we did, we were not able to send the frequent flyer number to the airline. You had to go to the airline website and actually kind of clock those miles in, and they they required the class at that point. So I don't know if it's relevant anymore, but yeah, that's one of one case that I remember that needed the, so the class. class. We should also think about utilizing the space. Like you know, when, it, when there is a class, right? So we can use the right side of this logo, and we can differentiate by using colors. Yeah, uh, sure. and but I, I think see the, the class. Uh, the, the seat class is 
of you know it's slightly technical and it's kind of for the airline yes. i was just explaining that basically like the re- the i mean every class has a fare attached to it uh, as i understand it uh, so like basically when you actually you know when you're booking in advance essentially you're booking tickets in the cheaper class right uh, and then that class gets sold out and then you know the second class gets opened up and that's how the prices increase so every class has a thing and uh, in a full service carrier like a jet airways this probably doesn't apply to indigo and the low cost carriers but basically the the uh, the full service carriers you 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 can be upgraded to first class or business class only if you are in a higher class as in you know what i mean like you only if, even if you are in economy but like if you are in k you never get upgraded so Only the only understanding I have of the class. So I think, I mean, irrespective, I I don't think it's kind of important for the user that much. Okay, so I think we are we are run out of time. Uh, I you know I guess you know we've kind of obviously uh, discussed a lot of ideas, and I'm sure that um, you know you guys have come up with good solutions. So basically, I mean, just to I something that I didn't get a chance to kind of uh, mention earlier. um i think through the workshop you know I, even though like i believe that you know uh the final result counts right through the workshop the idea is not that you kind of get the best solution out there it's just to kind of go through the process and uh, you know if if you guys are enthusiastic about like taking this to finish line uh you know you, you have that opportunity you can always go back you know like kind of refine this design and like you know i'll be around through the conference so if you have any ideas or you need feedback we can kind of work together to refine it and you know maybe we are we are figuring out a way if we can actually showcase whatever you guys have done through the conference so yeah i mean like you know the the these exercises don't end here like you can go back and refine it uh, but like we'll kind of keep moving in because i want to cover a lot of ground here yeah so moving on uh, so i mean i kind of spoke about you know how to balance business requirements with uh, you know what the user needs i think over and above what we did in the previous assignment i think there's one layer of uh, here basically you were just addressing what the user needs there's another layer that you know comes from the business which is like you know what does the business really want what what you know what does the business want to achieve with any sort of design uh, effort right So I'll give you an example before we get jump into the exercise, right? Um, so this is actually what our confirmation phase looked like, right? Uh, what I mean, basically, you know, as soon as uh, somebody booked a ticket on Clear Trip, you know, we just kind of jumped on the user saying, hey, you know what? Book a cab, do this, do that. Uh, and if you notice, um, you know, the, the what the the user actually booked. what he was charged was kind of like you know somewhere in the corner so even though this was kind of addressing business goals uh you know it wasn't really addressing the basic user need right so i mean what what after talking to a lot of users and getting feedback um in fact this was feedback coming from users where you know because people are still you know there are users who are still very uncomfortable with using their credit card and obviously payment gateways are not as stable as we would like them to be you know you some many times you get charged but your ticket doesn't get um, you know issued and stuff like that that happens a lot so you know um, there there was a certain sort of comfort level that the user wanted first right as soon as he booked the ticket he wanted to kind of feel that you know um you know i booked i mean this is what this is what i paid for and this is what i got in return right so i mean so we said hey you know what like let's not basically try and do everything let's take it slow let's kind of give that comfort level first uh, and so we basically broke the entire page into three parts right there's basically you know uh, your, just your booking so you know this is what you booked and like, this is what you paid and then you know things that you could do next which is essentially coming from what uh, the business wanted to do 
and of course, I mean business, both even deals for that matter is basically coming from the marketing team. So this is what basically we came up with, right? So this kind of really improved the experience of someone who's actually making. So and because obviously you know the transaction size is also much larger than what you would pay in an e-commerce website, uh, website buying a book and stuff like that. You're, you're you know you're spending anywhere between five thousand to twenty thousand. So like building that like sort of comfort level was very important. So yeah, this is what I was saying. Like you know, like even though you know you will have a lot of pressure to actually address business requirements, you need to understand that the the user comes first, and there's there's obviously ways to actually sort of balance it out, right? So I mean that kind of brings us to the second exercise. Um, how many of you actually? I'm I'm sure most of you use credit cards. So like, does everyone have a credit card uh, in the house? So, uh, what do you think about the credit card statements you get? Like, is it? Okay, so we're basically going to kind of you know look at the credit card statement, and here we kind of you know go. I mean, we we'll go in a little deep. Um, in, I mean, deeper in terms of what the user wants. So, imagine that basically, you know, uh, these this is what a user wants from a credit card company, right? Uh, it's kind of it's a pool that you can actually uh, sort of, you know, uh, access in case of an emergency. Ah, this is a group exercise. Sorry, I just forgot to mention. So um, you just kind of make groups of five people in, in your location only. Like uh, just you know, five people together can just sort of uh, sit together and brainstorm. Uh, so I was talking about um, the user, right? Uh, what the credit card really does is kind of gives you an additional pool uh, of financial resources in case of emergency or whatever you want to, you know, get a little lavish or whatever, right? Uh, also, you know, how do, I mean, how do I maximize my credit limit? If these are things that user wants, right? And also, you know, credit card companies come with their own sort of benefits, like, you know, you can actually, make, like, instead of spending money in cash, you can actually, for example, you're paying bills, Right, you can continue paying bills, which you normally do with cash, but if you use a credit card, you can actually redeem miles and stuff like that, or reward points or whatever. You can get free tickets and stuff like that. And then obviously there are a lot of deals that come. So these are all the things that the user expects from a credit card company. Uh, and of course, I mean, like you know, as far as possible, you know, even though it happens uh, that you land up, you know, paying uh, excess amount of interest, you want to avoid that obviously. So this is again something that the user wants. Uh, and what does a what does a bank want? Right? The bank just wants you to spend more, so that they can. I mean, that's the end goal, right? They obviously, you know, uh, they give you a big service, but like the way they make money is actually by you spending more and kind of uh, they earning interest from you, right? Being late. Sorry. Being late. Yeah, exactly. So I mean, these, I mean, now imagine that like you know this is what the user needs, um, and. You know, this is what the bank wants, right? Out of the whole process, um, can we like? So you guys have the the what do you call it? Everyone's got. I mean, all the groups have uh, one sheet. So we'll actually do this in a group exercise. I think to start off with, I want you to actually, you know, uh, really think about what what do you want to achieve with this redesign, right? What is that problem that you want to solve? And I mean, to start off with, it's important to actually set some goals, uh, you know, before you actually get on to sketching and doing anything, right? So, like, uh, you know, you you have the business objective, you have uh, what the user needs, and you have basically the the existing credit card statement, right? So, what is the problem that you want to solve is very important. So, like, I'll give you some examples, right? So, like, uh, assuming that. You know, you want more. You want user. You want to motivate users to actually spend more. So obviously, you know, reward points will become like a very large portion of your credit card statement. So you get a sense. The you know, there are other um, the, the there are other things which actually there are other smaller problems that you can solve. Right. So today, what does the, what does reward points really mean? Right. Like, what is the value? Like, it's very difficult to kind of gauge the value. You got to go to some website. And like you know, put something, and so like, does is there a way to actually communicate that easily? That you know, five thousand is you know, uh, 
is worth X, right, in rupees or even if it's indicated, at least the user knows. So I'm saying that, you know, they, these are sort of opportunities that you can look at, right. Um, yeah, but before you do that, I mean, it's important for you to kind of think about what you want to solve and I guess everyone, the fact that everyone on, you know, everyone in the house actually uses the credit and you guys understand what the pain points are. So take one pain point or multiple pain points and like see if there's a better way to present the credit card statement. So yeah, I'm, I'm putting this on and you guys have the, I think the prints for this version is much better. So, so I think um, just to set the context of the next part of uh, the workshop, um, you know, like we, we spoke about like, you know, we started off with, you know, how do we approach a design problem, how do we think about, you know, what the user needs, what kind of information, what's important and stuff like that. Um, and then we basically kind of looked at how do we balance what the business wants. Uh, I think one of the major challenge uh, is that what if, you know, you, you, you got to basically build something from scratch, you know, you don't really have any reference point. Uh, like, you know, redesigning, it's easy to basically look at an existing product, you know, find out what issues there are. But what if like, you know, it's a completely new thing, right? Uh, what kind of process that you, what kind of process can you follow that basically, uh, you know, lets you identify the problems and actually like come up with solutions for it. So, uh, you know, what I'm looking at is basically, you know, when you have to design from scratch, what if like, you know, uh, you know, you, you had a problem, you kind of run it by, uh, you know, a process and then basically you, you get a solution on the other side. And that's the whole idea of um, this part of the workshop. Like I'm kind of just going to quickly run through all the different techniques and sort of tools that, you know, we've been using to kind of solve uh, small to complex problems when it comes to uh, design and interfaces, right? <coughs> so, we are look, we're, I mean, in the next part, we're going to look at, you know, what if you got to basically build the user experience for an online uh, bill payment system, right? So, I mean, I've just kind of listed down, um, you know, what, you know, the brief requirements of this online billing system. We're not going to kind of uh, design the whole thing, but we'll kind of look at one small portion of it, right? I think the reason, I mean, all the all the examples that I've picked essentially, um, I've picked so that you know everyone understands the pain point, everyone pays bills, right? So like it's easy for you to identify with the user, and that's one of the reasons why I've picked these examples, right? Um, so, um, Kena, is everyone on like does everyone have access to like? Uh, Twitter, I mean, is it, I mean, I just want a, one person in a group to have access. What I'm going to do is, uh, we're just going to share one document uh, on Google Drive um, on the meta refresh hashtag. So, Kedar, can you just like share that uh, thing? Yeah. Just tell them to retweet it also, so that everyone gets access to it. Uh, so, you can just have that document. Essentially, it's like, uh, you know, I'm already covering that in the slideshow. Uh, but like you'll have a sort of, uh, you'll have a reference point of the entire thing and it's slightly more detailed uh, that will kind of, you know, you'll, you'll be able to uh, refer it through the design exercise. So, it's pretty much the same thing, uh, but slightly more detailed. So, yeah, I mean, talking about process, right, uh, you know, there's basically, you know, what is, what is the product supposed to do? You know, what does the customer need? Uh, again, what, what is the context? How are people going to use it? What are the flows? Uh, you know, how do we structure the information? How is the user actually going to navigate through the product? And the entire presentation layer, right? Uh, you know, what are the sort of, how do we, you know, I mean, I was talking to some uh, people before the workshop and kind of figuring out what are the challenges they face uh, while designing. And one of the things that came out is like, you know, it's kind of, how do I take a decision on, you know, what kind of color palette to pick, uh, you know, how to choose a typeface and stuff like that, right? So, we'll talk about that a little bit in the presentation aspect. And what I'm going to do is, while walking you through the process, I'm going to show you some examples, relevant examples of clear to like I did in the previous, uh, previous assignment. 
so that it kind of you know you, you kind of are able to identify with uh, you know what i'm talking about so again i mean like you know if you look at customer needs you know what what the customer really needs is you know a very secure reliable online payment system uh, and the fact that like you know he want today basically you know he's got to go to multiple places you got to go to a vodafone site to pay bill you have to go to bangalore one or you know the the you know the sort of electricity board to pay bills can i basically bring all this under one umbrella so that like i can actually pay bills from one place right um and of course you might have some specific needs this this customer might have some specific needs like you know i don't have a credit card i have you know i i need a net banking uh, i need to be able to pay by net banking and stuff like that right then there are some other users of the product right so they may not be the primary users but you still need to kind of you know address needs of these users like for example you will have people who will want to work for this company you know you'll have uh, you know people who want to i mean the investors interested investors or the press who wants who want to write about it so we're not going to get into detail but i'm just covering it because you know you will have to kind of you know address their needs as well and uh, when you talk about context and flow right we spoke about the life cycle i mean in the previous uh, assignment we were talking when we were talking about the boarding pass right how does a user navigate uh in an airport using the boarding pass right so like similarly here you know when we talk about a life cycle is really you know how does the user uh you know from a first time user to you know someone who's become a advanced user actually navigate to the site uh and to support this timeline uh does your site or your application have all the necessary state because you cannot talk to a first time user and a you know an advanced user in the same a uh, tone or i mean you know somebody i mean a first time user will need a little bit of hand holding uh, and stuff like that right so how do you how do you look at those different states of the application um, and the other thing is just looking at how does the user get things done right like for example i'll i'll, I'll talk about like you know what the thing, what are the things that user needs to get done through the application and the other thing is like these are probably slightly advanced uh, sort of uh, uh, areas that you might have to look at is like behavior right so um, things like does this guy pay uh, you know bills late or is he someone who pays bills on time stuff like that like do you who are you trying to kind of uh, cater to right the guy who actually pays bills on time or things like that so just understanding behaviors or at least being conscious about it because you know no user is the same so just you need to kind of be conscious about these things and um, the other part is communication touch point right just thinking through uh, so i mean when, when you talk about user experience it's not limited to the interface right uh, you know when is when when are we supposed to actually get in touch with the user what are the kind of communication touch point is there an email is there an sms and stuff like that right so uh, i think all these kind of you know fit into uh, you know i mean all, all this are opportunities to delight customers so talking about life cycle of a customer so you know you know whether the user is a first time visitor is he coming back again has he registered is he signed in uh, has he paid a bill before has he added a card has he set up you know an automated payment uh, facility on the account stuff like that right so these are kind of some things that you will have to kind of question um and to give you an example you know this is what this is the clear trip like account uh, uh, section and if you basically you know you've not really added a card this is what you get right so we just talk about express way you know what it is what are the benefits uh, and then this is the same page in a slightly different state right like if you have cards that that same page changes into like a card listing uh, i mean just this is an example and then through the account i was talking about you know how do you get users to do more things and so like i mean these are some of the upsells so if you see this pay you you see the right hand side uh sorry so this is basically you know get uh upselling like different features of the site depending on what state you are so for example you know if you um you know we have a profile a traveler profile and if you not really uh, told us what your sort of uh, meal preference or seat preference is then we'll ask you that right so if like you know so we'll just keep building your profile without you having to do that 
or say for example you know you booked a trip uh you know you book many trips to bangalore we'll i mean from bangalore we'll say hey you know what is bangalore your home city and then we'll keep adding to the profile without the user having to do it in one shot right so i mean this is really kind of those elements that you need to think about while building this what is the state of the user right uh, what is what do you want from the user right like for example in terms of uh, so like i'll give you an example in the context of a bill right uh, assuming that you know he's been paying a bill with a particular credit card and he's not stored that credit card there's there's a possibility to kind of ask him to store that credit card or whatever i mean this is just an example but yeah you need to think about those things as well uh so as, as far as like you know all the tasks that are involved for a user you know it's just thinking through you know how does the user sign up you know how does he add a bill how does he pay a bill uh you know how does he save a card and stuff like that and you know looking at this in like in in sort of like looking at this holistically right um again what are the touch points across the board uh like for example if someone has to store a card uh where are the opportunities for you to actually get him to store a card without him doing that explicitly so give you an giving you an example right uh express pay i mean um this is you know where like you know we we, we this was an ad that we ran so you know uh, this talking about or drawing attention to the consistency in the communication right so basically this is what the ad looked like and uh, you know we actually uh, what do you call it uh, we advertise the url which was creative.com/expressway and then when users actually land up on the expressway there is like that consistency right like it's you can immediately identify and kind of you know it's kind of adds that like uh, extra like sort of because expressway is all about storing a card and stuff like that you need to build build in that trust right so if you kind of have an ad that you know has a particular visual and then that cut doesn't translate into your online presence there's sort of like doubts that come into users minds right so right from uh, you know how it's delivered on the desktop to the mobile and then while creating an account or sort of in the account section so that this is like more like public facing but when you are kind of inside the account again there's like that consistency in branding and communication across the board right on the mobile apps Uh, across the board even like during i mean if users don't users haven't actually bothered to do it through the accounts like there is that again um we actually are kind of you know using the brand to kind of have that connect uh you know during the book flow right uh, and so basically right from you know getting people to store the card to actually you know transacting with expressway enabled right so there's kind of yeah i mean i just wanted to share this example because i feel that the success of Ex- expressway lies in kind of building the trust through consistency across the board building that brand pushing it through the uh, pu- uh, pushing it through the product right it's not really it's is like marketing and product working together to actually sort of uh, building a brand which is kind of very very sort of strong anyways uh so i mean talking about communication touch points right i was i was saying you know what are the communication touch points email sms uh, you know things like you know how do you kind of talk about the benefits of this feature or service uh, what kind of reminders or notifications do we need, we need to put into the uh, because i mean this this product essentially uh, calls for notifications right because you know you need to remind users that you know there's a bill coming up so just that experience right when does it happen how often does it happen and stuff like that right uh, and of course pro- contextual product upsell right is there uh, like i was talking about while making a payment can you actually get him to store a card now storage of card is actually a separate feature but you kind of do it through uh, you know a slightly different task okay so again giving you some examples from clear trip about this so whether it's about you know delivering a ticket uh, to you know like cancelling a like cancelling a ticket right like so you have basically you know cancellation is a big problem refunds is a big problem uh, you know we have to actually um, we have three parties involved you have the airline 
I mean, it's clear trip. There's the airline. There's a bank, right? So um, there are kind of uh, you know, in in many cases, uh, because a lot of the process is manual, things you know, users get. I mean, it it, it is a longish process. Like getting a refund is a longish process. So how do you make users actually comfortable about it, right? So we actually we, we you know we kind of like this this communication builds that trust that hey you know what we this is the status of your cancellation the refund is getting processed and we go out of the way to even ask whether like the refund got processed even though that's out of our control we could actually push it so the last email is just kind of you know sending out saying that hey did you get your did the money actually get credited to your bank and stuff like that right? so yeah I mean I think you know, you got to look at all this holistically. It's not the interface. User experience is like way beyond uh, just the interface, right? Um, moving on, um, talking about contextual upsells, right? So this is actually so you, I don't know if you guys know we actually you know launched this product called Collection, which is essentially travel inspiration. We tied up with Condonas Travel and kind of launched this collection. Now we had a boring, you don't have any trips kind of a. Message uh, in your dashboard earlier on. Uh, so hey, you don't have any trips? Why don't you go somewhere? Just to go to the like the desktop. Now this is a great opportunity to actually inspire people. You don't have trips? Hey, go get inspired. You know. So just I just wanted to highlight this example because it kind of fits in really well uh, in this context. Okay, so from I mean moving from you know the the context communication touch points. Uh, I'll just get into slight. I mean. I mean the site structure itself. I mean you know. Um, so when when you're thinking about the flow, right? You you essentially have to think about the flow before you decide. You know what are the screens that are going to come in because you don't do it the other way around. You kind of understand the flow of the user and then figure out now if this is the flow, what are the screens that I I need to build to support this flow, right? Um, and how are people actually going to navigate through those flows? Uh, and does your does does the so I mean you know actually what's interesting is the navigation can like be uh, a great way to communicate uh, what the site is all about. I think people underestimate what a navigation can do. Uh, I actually come. I mean I mean I was not able uh, to actually get a good example, but many times you land up on a site and you don't realize what the site actually does. I mean I'm sure a lot of you people have actually experienced that, especially when the service is new. And I guess all of you probably are building products where they are unique, and they don't exist. Uh, there's no reference point for users, so they don't have any. There's nothing familiar. Users are not familiar with that concept at all. So I mean, think about how you structure your navigation because that can actually be a design. It can actually communicate a lot about what your product does. I mean, I'll, I'll just give you an example. Uh, I mean, you know, when you come at Clear Trip, you know, okay, it's a travel site. You have this bunch of things, and then you know, there's some, you know, there's some some level of grouping also. There's basically, if you notice, there's like you know, you you have the search projects pro products, and they have an arrow because like that's just to indicate that like if you click on those, the con you know, the context will be maintained. You'll kind of be in that same sort of that same interface uh, versus if you go below. You would actually land up so like if you see collection and way to go and small world that the context completely changes. You don't have you don't no longer have the left navigation. So yeah, I mean like you know you uh, I, if I put the arrow, user would actually expect like the site to open up right there. So things like that. There are you know small set of cues that you can give users to kind of explain what the product or what 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 they should expect. Uh, so from site structure, moving on to at at a very screen level, right? Um, if I mean you guys did boarding pass and you did the credit card, I guess you guys really thought about how can I actually present this same information in a way that's it can be consumed really easily, and it kind of you can get all the key information uh, points in like at at a glance, right? So. Uh, that starts with really understanding what's important. Again, like driving the same point, uh, what is really important, and then you kind of start with that, and everything else kind of becomes secondary, right? So some examples again. You know, this is what a review page looked like, right? When you actually uh, were booking a flight ticket, this is what it looked like. Now, so if you notice, 
pretty much everything uh, in the itinerary is flat, right? Now, obviously, that's not how users expect it to be, right? Uh, this is what the new book flow looks like. It's a, you know, you can actually get a sense of uh, the itinerary at a glance compared to this. Like here, I have to actually really, you know, get into details and really like read all the information, right? Here, like for example, economy is at the same level as the flight details or at the, you know, and you, if you look at, you know, uh, the departure airport, it's all jumbled up. Departure and date is all jumbled up. Here, actually, it's kind of broken into smaller pieces, so you can actually consume it layer by layer. So you actually look at, you know, the first piece, then you actually kind of, you know, uh, get into more d details at your will versus, you know, um, you having to kind of deal with it yourself. Anyways, uh, another example is like our hotel details page, right? So this is what our hotel details page. Again, you know, there's it's just completely flat. Uh, you know, self service. Like we are not kind of saying what is important here, right? So we said, why don't we kind of, uh, you know, improve that? So you know, here through the hotel details, we're, we're basically highlighting, uh, you know. How good is the hotel, right? Uh, it's basically pretty much all the. So just see this. Even though there's a lot of content on this page, this with very less information says so much about the hotel, right? Uh, you you get you get a sense of the quality of the hotel. You get a sense of you know how many rooms that a hotel has. You know where it's located. You know and what it looks like, etc. etc. I mean photos obviously gives a big, uh, you know gives a big indication of the quality of the hotel. Uh, I mean, same thing. I mean, a lot of this actually is getting inspired. Like most of our design uh, is getting inspired by the mobile because uh, you know we we always have constraints on mobile because it's much smaller. And in fact, what we're doing is you know we, we're look we're thinking minimal on the mobile and then bringing it back to the desktop. So yeah, I mean that covers um, you know this the, the structure, I mean, page structure part of it. Um, you know, how do we actually uh, deliver that at a glance experience? Uh, moving on to the presentation layer, right? Uh, so, when it com comes to presentation, right? So, now let's look at uh, bill payments, right? I think the first thing that you know you would, you would like to think about when you come down to actually building or rather, you know, creating a visual style for the site. Is really think of, thinking about all the metaphors and keywords that are associated with bill payments, right? So you know, if there's cash, there's there's a card, right? Um, there are bills, actual bills, right? So can can you collect? Say, I mean, I, or rather, the way we do it is we start collecting visuals uh, that are related, that kind of inspire us to for to take the direction for the visual design, right? So you know, uh, everything. So first, make a like a key, key uh, list of keywords and you know what's as associated keywords, and then start collecting visuals that kind of start start inspiring you about colors, typography, and stuff like that, right? And I think this this exercise also will kind of uh, give you a sense of what the treatment and voice and character should be for the site. Uh, I'll give an example. Expressway again. This is what actually we started off, right? We, I mean, when you talked about ex Expressway, we kind of, you know, started collecting these um, sort of highway signboards, and this is what we came out with, right, in the beginning. And obviously, this this is not the kind of um, this is not what we wanted to communicate. It, it feels very informal. It's not. It, it doesn't feel, uh, you know, sort of um, trustworthy. And then we kind of, you know, further. You know, research. I mean, just collected more sort of uh, you know images that uh, you know are relate to expressways. What kind of signboard and so on. And this is what we finally came out right. So I think like it's. It, I mean, this is also a very iterative process. Uh, you know, you will come up with visuals. You'll, you 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 will collect visuals. You will kind of go down a path. Realize it's not working. You will, you know go back, start from scratch. And and I'm, I'm, I, I, it's just that basically. You you know uh, following this process just makes you conscious and it's very easily reproducible, right? So like for example, if this retro style um, you know visuals are not working, uh, maybe I need to take a slightly different approach, right? So just 
I mean, I think, but it's, it's important to kind of be able to reproduce that. Um, the other way to actually do it is like, you know, uh, building inspiration. I, I mean, I have not formally done this, but, um, you know, it, I mean, inspiration and mood boards come from, uh, you know, it, it's kind of traditionally used by fashion designers, interior designers, and, uh, you know, even graphic designers too. It's actually a way to convince clients more than anything else, but actually it can work. I mean, I mean it, today's, in today's scenario, you have Pinterest, you can actually go look for a lot of images, put it in one place. So this is actually a uh, board that Anand created. He actually is going to speak tomorrow. Um, you know, he's uh, leading design at Cuc Cucumber Town. And he's write, written a fantastic article about how to choose a typeface. And, you know, this is this is his inspiration. Uh, I mean, Cucumber Town is all about, you know, f uh, you know chefs and, f and people sh are kind of sharing recipes and stuff like that. So, like, his inspiration was really, uh, was derived from food graphics, right? Like, what kind of labels are out there uh, uh, that kind of show up on food items, right? So, I mean... You can, this is very easy to do. You don't have to kind of, you know, go cut newspapers and stuff like that. Um, anyways, um, the other, the other aspect is, which is very important is basically, you know, like refinement and detailing, right? Like that plays a big role. At least, I mean, like we, we spend a lot of time doing that. So no matter, uh, so, you know, and like I said, now, if you, if you notice the flow, it's, you know, it's starting from, you know, very abstract to, you know, more uh, uh, tangible stuff, right? So, at this level, you kind of really look at alignments and, you know, how do you kind of refine that visual hierarchy uh, through this process, right? So, I, I'm giving you some examples. There's, there's a, if you look at the site, I'm just kind of drawing attention to all the details that have gone into uh, uh, the I mean, design of the site. I mean, that's probably one of the reasons why it looks clean. At least I think it looks clean. Um, so, you know, um, you know, just, you know, simple things like, you know, that the checkbox is aligned with the, with the rest of the icon, right? So, from there to, you know, forms alignment. So, like this, the loader bar is actually exactly double the size of the mother deal and the sort bar, right? So when it actually, so if you notice, uh, sorry, so when it actually uh, finishes loading and actually, you know, uh, transitions out, it uncovers uh, the content below that, right? Without any sort of uh, extra lines or anything like that. And, you know, that kind of, you know, extends all the way on the right side. So, I mean, I'm talking about um, sort of, you know, details, um, you can actually control, I mean, like with very subtle uh, sort of treatment, you can actually control how users, I mean, so at least you can actually uh, try to control it. Users will finally do what they have to, but like you could actually guide them. So, I mean, I'll just give you, this is how we expect users to actually go through or consume content on the site. The fact that, you know, there is something loading and there's an animation, your kind of, um, your attention goes to that, right? And then, obviously, it's, I mean, the, the fact that it's loading, you kind of start noticing things around this page, right? Uh, and then, basically, once the, the results actually load, your, your focus goes towards the result. And I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll showcase how this actually happens, right? So we have, uh, if you if you look at it at a very sort of uh, minute detail level, it, I mean, this is how it's layered, right? So you, I mean, literally we have, I mean, these layers in terms of uh, uh, what do you call it? They they they're very subtle, but actually it's there, right? So uh, coming back now, the fact that the uh, the fact that the results are loaded, you know, there are multiple ways to consume the same content, right? So you could basically, you know, look at each unit at a time. You know, if if you're concerned with the price, you could compare prices. Uh, you know, I mean, and you know, you if you're kind of already this, if if you already if if you are kind of interested in one particular flight, 
you are actually now only consuming that that unit right you are not looking at anything else uh something i mean just basically you know just showing you some details of the libraries that we built any i mean so moving on i mean moving on to uh the transitions right uh so i mean i i believe that basically transitions work if like you kind of use it uh you know uh, you, you it's not all over the place you kind of use it smartly uh it can actually bring a lot of character to the product uh just giving you some examples uh this is what i mean just showing you some sort of transitions on way to go right so as soon as so i mean actually and you know you don't think of this uh while designing it it's just that basically you spend enough time with the product and you start seeing patterns and then you connect right like you say if i find like you know you you know you have a search bar that same search bar shows up in the page inside can we kind of transition it right uh so there are multiple transitions here one is basically the search bar moves up to uh the top then at this stage uh you know we don't have the root information uh and you, you only see the icons for the mode transport and as soon as we get information about how long the routes are we actually kind of build the route and that's also animated so like we didn't get this on day one it was just like you know hey, this looks very abrupt can we actually make it more natural and stuff like that right so i think um don't think about these on day one like kind of look for these patterns you might find them and like if you if you are able to pull it off i think it kind of adds a lot of uh fun uh fun factor to the thing. so th this was another thing right so initially i mean we have you probably if you use clearter regularly we have basically a modify search button there and then essentially it shows a search form and um, that search form used to have a calendar so basically when you want to modify you can see uh i mean you can see what are the prices if i want to change the dates and stuff like because people really change the dates and we saw we saw we, we noticed that a lot of people actually use the modify dates so we said hey why not like move that calendar outside so that people don't have to hit modify sir they just basically you know um, you know they just use this calendar from here and when you hover you can actually see the rates right so but people were so used to using modify search like this got completely missed right in the beginning so we a lot of people started like complaining hey where is the calendar in the modify search right so great opportunity to actually do two things one is you know retain the calendar inside and then also draw uh, attention to this calendar so basically now what we've done is this came later on right so it, that cal the same calendar actually transitions in place right uh, it kind of does two things one is obviously it, it it's available outside but also kind of reminds user that this is available outside right so again you know something that we are not thought but it just kind of you know we saw that pattern we, we got it working uh, another uh, transition wanted to showcase right, so like this is uh, we wanted to bring in that sort of you know delight factor like every time somebody finished a step so yeah this was a small subtle thing uh So yeah I mean like I'm kind of covered with uh, you know the examples the, the whole idea you know to show you that it was to kind of uh, get you thinking while you actually work on this assignment is that you 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 could actually look at all these things um while building it uh, and so moving to the design exercise you guys uh, have you shared the link has anyone been able to access that page has that was better yeah so that i mean um just to give, yeah it's a group exercise just to give you uh, so we are now obviously we were talking about the bill payment application but we are not basically looking at the entire application because i mean obviously we don't have too much time in fact i mean we just now we have just 45 minutes so we got to kind of sprint into this um, so the scope is essentially looking at just the dashboard of 
this product, right? So like if if you are a user, if you you are someone who make like pays bills online, right? Uh, what is your expectation of a you know like a home screen, right? Like uh, what kind of uh, you know uh, one is obviously what are the states and scenarios that you spoke about? You know users being first time or repeat users and stuff like that. Um, and you know what? How do you what? How do you give this user a summarized view of his account, right? Like uh, you know the bills that he's paid, you know bills that are pending or you know upcoming bills or whatever, right? Um, uh, yeah, I mean basically we we're just going to kind of focus on this aspect. We're not going to look at the entire. Uh, we're not going to look at the entire application, but just. Think about what the navigation should be, and what the dashboard should be. And I think the the only difference between the previous one and this is that uh, the credit card statement was. I mean, we started off with like a boarding pass, which was very small, a very small problem to solve. To credit card, which is static, this becomes really dynamic. There's a little bit of there's a timeline involved. So yeah, I mean, how does how do you how does a product respond to uh, different states of the user, right? Uh, if he's like, I, I, I've already kind of drawn attention to the fact that does the product talk to a guy who's coming for the first time differently versus a guy who's, you know, added a bill versus a guy who's slightly advanced and has multiple bills and stuff like that, right? So yeah, I think that's uh, the scope. Uh, we have 45 minutes. I mean, obviously, there's lunch after this. So I mean, yeah, you guys want to like you, you can continue working on this. Even uh, uh, you know, we can extend it a little bit. Uh, if you guys want to buy frames out of this or just ideas. Uh, buy frames, yeah. And like I said, we don't we don't end at that. Like I mean, one o'clock is not where this this assignment ends. You can feel free to kind of you know go back, refine it, and we'll kind of uh, we're we're trying to figure out how to. Showcase your work during the conference if you're going to be attending the conference later on. Because I think it's 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 good to kind of take this to finish line because you know all the stuff that I spoke about, if you're able to at least you know cover uh, it, you know everything till the presentation later, it'll be great. But uh, yeah, I mean, depends on you know how much time you guys also have outside of uh, today and tomorrow. Some things could be done as a offline email or some group. Yeah, sure. So, yeah. yeah, it's it's on the meta refresh uh, hashtag. Yeah, I have it over, but I can't find it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Sorry? I have it over, but I can't find it. Yeah, yeah. 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 So yeah, yeah. First one the Yeah. So how did you lead to that 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 will So I mean, I think the you, you kind of just ask yourself, right? Does this does this basically you know uh, communicate trust? I mean, is it like is it a is it a logo that people will trust, right? And it it's too playful for you to trust it, right? Uh, you would trust. So if you look at the actual icon that finding the logo that we came out is like is the is a sign that you can go ahead. You know, I mean, like you have those signs, you trust that, right? You look at that and basically, you know, uh, if you if you you trust that visual. Uh, so I think that's really the framework, right? You, what is you need to ask yourself: What does the brand need to communicate? 
Yeah. If trust is one of those things, then yeah, it communicates express way, but it doesn't communicate trust. So I think that's the real uh, reason why it didn't fly. <laughs> Yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So it's got. I mean, it's got all the elements. Uh, you know, it's in fact, if you see the visual, if you see the brand, the the campaign and all that, it's even though the name is run is expressway, the image is of a runway. Right. So, I mean, so you have flexibility. I mean, like, you know, you have flexibility to play around uh, a little bit. Uh, so it communicates. Yeah, I mean, you're absolutely right. I mean, it does have the elements of an airport. And I was talking about you trust that, right? Like if it says you know, this is the direction you need to go, you trust that. So I think it has that sort of element to it also. So twitter.com slash meta refresh and you will be, be able to see something. Does this have people have access? Uh, You've put a hashtag. Who's not been able to access that thing? It's not there. It's not a hashtag, it's a hashtag. And, okay, so it's available, but right? Yeah. So everyone's got the document. So it's basically, I mean, it's the same, uh, it's whatever I've covered in the last part, uh, slightly more verbose. Uh, and I think like the idea there is that we don't have to, so we, like for the purpose of the exercise, we don't have to actually cover everything in that. It's just like you can use this for future reference uh, while working on a product, but like it covers like the scenarios aspect. So you can you, you feel free to kind of refer it, but it, I mean, you don't have to cover all the points there.